Intro ready. Yeah, we're 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 not we're just gonna wait. Hello, this is Andy, Bill, Bill, and Ellen. We're here at Joe Biden's uh, driveway, right across the street there. And um, let's see what time is it. Oh. I think it's before ten o'clock. We're starting the live stream a little bit early. Let's see if we can get the banner in the in the shot here. It on. is 9.38 in oh. sunny Wilmington, Delaware. There we go. This is brought to you by Andy. And that's two bills, by the way. Give me something to read. Uh, let me look back a tiny bit. Just trying to get our tripod set up. Our banner is too big. Even if you, what if you back off a little? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yep. I wanna keep the light hey, Amber, here. Amber, you can just lay down, you're good. Okay, so this is down. All right, we're gonna back up this camera a little bit. I'm the holder of the light. My tripod keeps sinking too. Where are you going? We're not going. I think your car is a security thing now. All right, we're going to go with that. You don't want it sideways, do you? No. Well, let's leave it like that. Okay, that's good. All right. Yeah, that's All right, good. so we're live streaming and we'll get started with our stuff in a minute. But um yeah, um so just for point of reference, we're in Wilmington, Delaware, and um we're right across the street from Joe Biden's driveway and security checkpoint and the gate to get into his driveway are on the other side of the road that's right behind our banner. So, uh, yeah, we'll get started in a minute. We have to, some flags and some more stuff we're setting up. So we're going to keep doing that. And we'll just leave, leave the camera running. And maybe Bill wants to chat at the live stream. So It's a balmy third. <laughs> what, about 40 degrees here. Could be worse. We're all smiling, right? The famous Ellen Barfield over there. We can't see you because we're focused on the band other, but. Well, maybe we can just do a little pan. There you go, yeah. Bears, Ellen. Veterans for Peace, yes. Oh, uh, let's see. Are you, are you holding that? Are we gonna try and tie it up or? Haven't decided I'm holding yet. it for the moment, and for it doesn't moment. have to be this way. If you have a rope, yeah, you can no. tie to that tree, little tree yeah, there, or even the fence, top of the fence. Yep. We're Let's working see. out some of the logistics here for all you thousands of people out there in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any viewers right now. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably won't be that's any That's a good all. flavor, but, you know, that's all right. If you, I'm going to, I can lift up this tripod for a second, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, we so, you can, beyond the, um... Oh, okay, you see me. Yeah, let me sh shine the flashlight. Yeah, there you go. So uh, you, if anyone's watching, <laughs> we'll over top of the sign on the other side of the street is the driveway to Biden residence. And the signs on the fence are um, clear signs from the Secret Service saying, don't come in. And no drone zone. No drone zone. Yeah. Say that. And as ten... I commented, the rest of the world is a drone zone and a bombing zone, but no drones here. No drones here. I can't see a single one. No yeah. drones. In the sky. Where's it? But there are some Venusians coming down on ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Bill. Hi. Can... Howdy. <laughs> Where do you live, Bill? Other oh, Bill. I live in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. So we have Richmond, Maryland, and Pennsylvania represented here. Yep. 
We have a canine core. <laughs> Andy, is this um, tilted too high up? I'm, I can't tell, but basically uh, what you can see is uh, um, well, the sign's not centered, but... Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe that's good because we'll be on top of it, but is there a way to um, l like lengthen this side or shorten that side, these sides a little bit? Which, you know, shorten this side? In other words, we want to tilt it. Okay. Well, we can... Is we there can, a tilt? Yeah, we can, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we loosen oh, this, okay. loosen that. Yeah. And then it'll tilt. Oh, tilt. that's the way to do it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I don't think we actually can get the whole banner in there. But I mean, well, then we'll. But we can uh, we can take it off the tripod. And wow, around. these are amazing. Your daughter made these. Yeah. Um, as soft as this oh, mesh. Gosh. You know what? You know what I forgot? Hammer. The hammer. Oh. <laughs> Sitting in the garage. Grab a rock from that wall. Or yeah, you do that. No, not a good idea. Move around a little bit. There could be. Yeah, Eleanor, we should tie that up because you're going to want to be free to move around. Yes, I am. It might be softer over here. Let's see. I mean, it won't all be on the, uh, but we can pan. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll pan and stuff. repeats. might have a hammer here. Caveman hammer. I don't think we're going to need okay. it actually. Okay, okay. Big stick. He's pretty good. Oh, this, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This there you go. This is very not secure. So uh, this, um, this is not secure. Don't bump. It's leaning on a stick. Yeah, that works. That works. Um, oh, God, I love this height. Oh, my God. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Oh, who painted that? It's hard to you have the hammer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's what it's going to be. I don't know how well it's going to work, so but it's got okay. a little bit of weight to it. But it's yeah, such a wonderful thing. Can you see the whole thing? Anybody who's read the poem will instantly know what it is. <laughs> see, and I'm sure a lot of people have. I, I have, but I, I didn't know. That might be good. Yeah. So we know. Yeah. So we know. Super. Boy Scouts, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had heard his name, but I didn't really know about it. Now we just need to. This is so powerful. It's so. It does uh, remind me of uh, the Martin Luther King uh, longevity speech that he gave the night before he died. Yeah. It's almost like. He, he knew it was coming at some point. He didn't know exactly when. Good rule. <laughs> I can find something else. I can find stick. I have one more thing. I can stick it in. Like that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. So we'll just uh, when we do the speed chanting, we'll set these up. I'll lay them down and have them ready. And we can yep. set them up when we do that. That sounds good. Back. Those are our um, teleprompters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
see, I think that's the, this is the second set out. So if anybody's watching the live stream, part of our program, Bill came up with all these great chants, and there's only four of us, but we're going to try and do some like speed, small group chanting, and if you're watching the live stream, we're going to ask you to chant with us, loud well, enough so that we can hear you all the way here. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, is that even possible, like that we... We can hear people um, chanting in. Um, I don't know. Maybe in our mind. <laughs> yeah. He's got some like those are more thumbtacks that might be better. have uh, two folders with a copy of like everything so yeah they're go, on look, the dashboard let me go get those oh here we go here we go for you and then we'll just share around. I think I may be well I don't have the um let's see. I don't have the land acknowledgers but I've got it on my phone. Okay. Well what's it's I'm there. Gonna, it's all there. Okay. And um does the song have the uh the letters Oh I didn't change the oh, yes, I yes. like your change and I didn't do that yet. Oh no but you did get the Sarah the Sarah Lynch song so that's great. Wait, yeah, we, I mean, yeah, we might. Power on. Testing one, two, three. Harry. It works. Well, that looks pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, somebody take a picture. I can't take a picture because my yeah, camera is no live streaming. Nope. Bill, can you take yes. a picture? I'm, we have one more. We have the declare emergency banner. I don't know. I don't think we even have room for that, really. Some way to. Do something. 
Maybe over the fence. Do that. I don't know. That's probably that that person. No, it probably is. It's not gonna hurt their fence. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Whenever we are not going over the. We made a whole little enclosure here. We, we sure do. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. What time it is? Is it 10? wait till 10 and then start or should we just start how about photos taking photos yeah. <laughs> you want i can uh, help with this light if you want to take some more photos well what do you what would you like photos of anything just the activity um, yeah why don't you get the three of us standing here okay Uh, then I'll take one of the three of you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is that? Oh, that was... Oops. Lest all the acquaintance be forgot. Come on, guys. <laughs> we'll get going, don't worry. It's just a picture, we'll get going. <laughs> I think about it. Too. All right, here. Let me get one of you in there. Okay. All right, I got you. Look, and let's get in the picture. Well, she will. She she will add the picture. Sit, girl. Look over that way. Look that way. All right. You ready, y'all? Yeah. One. Ready. Two. Three. Think about three. You get a bit closer too. So then we do a group song, which is there are more riders, more, more water waters rising. rising. And then we were going to do the rest of the songs like walking in, but I don't think we'll do that. So I think we'll just do do all the songs then. And then, then we'll do the speed chant. So the speed chant, what I thought was, we'll put these up in case anybody's watching the live stream. And then first we'll do all 16 together. So we'll just do the first chant together, the second chant together, the third, all the way to the 16th, and then we'll do one round where I do do a chant, then you do a chant, then you do a chant, and we'll just go around to go up to all 16th, and then the, then then we'll do one where I do the call, you do the response, you do the call, you do the response, we'll go around and do that 16th. Because yeah, yeah. people are going to know good. these chants by the time we're That's good, And yeah. then, just for a few seconds, we're just going to randomly do whichever chant you want. We'll see what noise we're Are the chants on this? Yeah, they're on there and they're on oh, here, okay. too. Is yeah, that the good. munchie and cacophony? That's the munchie and cacophony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. I was so excited to hear it. I like that. <laughs> All right, so then we have the land back and reparation statement. Um, does anybody want to read that? Not want to read it? I don't know. I think we are. 
Oh yeah, but I mean, who wants to like be the person reading it? We have to pick somebody that. W five seven XL seven Q. Oh no, no, it's back here. Okay. Do you, no. Bill, would you like I, to do that? I, I will. I don't know what it is, but I'll read it. Uh, sure. Well, here, let me show it to you. It, is it about like indigenous lands? No, no, it's no. uh. Oh, well, it is a little bit. Um, here, let me let you take a look okay. at it. Here, it's right here. I'll read it. Whatever it is. All right, well, if you're going to read it, then we'll just, uh, we'll pass it to you when it's that time. Okay? Well, I'd like to look at it. Oh, you'd like to look at it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, I don't want to mess you up. Okay. No, well, just so I know what I'm going to do. There's no messing up here. All right, so then after that, um, we're going to take turns reading the prayers and meditations. So I think we'll just go around the circle and read different yeah. ones. I mean, I feel like I should read the one that I wrote because I kind of know the, the cadences. Yeah, that's other than that, nice. we'll just whichever yeah. one, however it passes. Yeah. And, um, you know, then we'll see where we are as far as midnight and uh, whether we're, you know, whether we're on time. or I, obviously, we, obviously, we didn't time this. We don't know if it's exactly two hours. We'll right. see. Uh, see how we go. Well, we'll just, we'll just recycle through if we need to. Yeah, we'll just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the speed uh, I have, a, I have a, um, a question for the group about one of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, it goes... Um, the no pipeline, no way one. And it goes, um, and the people of the Gulf say, no LNG, no way. And I was thinking, wherever it says no LNG, take no off, because I think it just sounds better. And the people of the Gulf say, LNG, no way. Does that sound okay? Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it's a double negative, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I had something else I was going to set up. What the heck was it? Oh well, there's this some other kind of long, so you want me to do the whole thing? Y if you're I mean, up for it, if you're up for it, if you, if you're I'm up for it, just want to know. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Just uh, one for me, and we're gonna have to share the other stuff. Yeah. Amber, stay here. I'll be right back. Stay here. All right. So I think we're about ready to start. to thank Joe Biden for tuning in from St. Croix. Yeah, Joe, how are you? No doubt. Joe, it must, oh, we have a man. Joe, it must be lovely there. Hello. Nice to have Did you nice. see that villa where he's staying? It's so nice. Now, um, could someone come into the light? Because um, oh, yeah, when we we're doing the readings, we're going to step in the light, correct? Yeah, right? I, I had the light up on this uh, stool. Maybe I should put, do that again. Let's see. And Andy, come here and um, take a look at this and see what you think. Okay. Um, Is that light a little bit better? Hi, girl. I was about to tell you I'm here. So now, so that's good. Yeah, that's much. That's very good. Okay. But do you see how it's like um, tilted? Is there any way you can still tilt it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like yeah. It, um, it's just. A lot of um, space up at the top. Yeah, let's see. This thing should tilt forward. I just got to figure out which thing to turn and push here. There we go. That's four. How, take a look at that. See if that looks good to you. Yeah, so that's turn, better. Turn that's, it a little bit good. that way now. Good, Maybe yeah. go to the side here. Um, How's that? That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah. And does it need to come back a little bit? Um, just take a more near. Do you think we'd lose too much? Ah, uh, yeah, sound? I don't know. That's hard. Because yeah. the sound's got to reach to it. So. Yeah. Well, we do yeah. have we do have the mic. Um, I think I think we should just leave it there okay, so it's good. close, and yeah. then you know when we're well, we, we can, can pan, pan around and stuff. Okay. Yeah, we'll hold the. That sounds great. All right. Let's see. I don't. Right. Think, we do have a viewer. Hello, viewer. How are you? We're gonna get so. Oh, Hello, they just left. Viewer. I scared them away. <laughs> oh no, they're still there. All right. Think we think it's close to ten o'clock. We're gonna start our program here. Yeah. Our wonderful program that Bill did. Grab all your friends. All right, so um, hello everybody. Um, this is uh, Bill and Ellen and Bill and Andy, and we are in Wilmington, Delaware, and we're right across the street from Joe Biden's driveway. And we'll pick this tripod up later and like show you in case you're interested to see that. But it's right behind where we are. You just can't see it from the light. And um, so. The, basically what we're going to do, first we're, we're going to acknowledge the land where we are and 
um, say something about um, about the golf as far as the land acknowledgement, and then we're gonna um, share some feelings about why we're here tonight, each of the four of us, and you know maybe you all who are watching can just kind of think about the same thing. So as we're talking about them, then we're gonna sing some songs, and um, then we are going to do some chants. And that's, uh, we'll talk about that when we get there, but we're going to try to make it maybe uh, participatory. I know that sounds silly and it is, but we'll do it anyway. And um, then uh, we're going to talk about land back and reparations. And then we have some, um, some meditations and some poems and prayers that we're going to read. And then um, at midnight or so, or pretty much at midnight, we're going to sing Old Biden Zine or Old Lang, Old Lang, Old Lang Zine with uh with different lyrics so here we go um so i think um ellen's gonna do the na land acknowledgement for us and let me give you the mic ellen yep that's different from what i heard. yes it is we share this statement from the lenape union land trust the lenape also called the lenny lenape and the Lenny Lenape with two N's instead of one. And even the Delaware, that's a European name, but it came to be the name of this area, so they, they accepted it too. They are an indigenous people of the Northeastern woodlands who live in the US and Canada. Their historical territory includes present day Northeastern Delaware, New Jersey, and Eastern Pennsylvania along the Delaware River watershed. New York City, Western Long Island and the Lower Hudson Valley. Today, though with much diminished numbers, there are Lenape tribes recognized by either the U.S. federal government or several U.S. states. The Lenape Union Land Trust works with the Lenape Indian Tribe of Delaware, based in Cheswold, Delaware, and proudly acknowledge that the Lenape diaspora includes five federally recognized nations in Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Ontario. And there's the list here of all of them, which I don't think I'll read, it's fairly long, but Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Ontario, and all over the Northeast. We share the Lenape Union Land Trust mission, which is to return stewardship of lands and waters of Lenape, Lenape Hokink to the Lenape through holding land in trust and creating opportunities toward that stewardship with collaborations across the Lenape diaspora. The vision of a thriving ecosystems across Lenape Hokink where communities honoring the original people adopt the worldview that all our relations includes all of Earth's inhabitants. The objective is that members of the Lenape and Nantico communities hold a majority of positions on the board of the land trust and are given every opportunity to have paid positions stewarding their own ancestral lands and waters. Their aims are to create educational spaces for humans to deepen their appreciation and honor for the more than human world to increase native biodiversity of all plant, animal, fungi, and microbial life, to remove invasive species, reestablishing appropriate native species, and to use non-native species with intention and discernment, to create an abundance of nutrient-dense food and clean water. To increase the soil's capacity for holding water and carbon. To increase ecosystem capacity, stemming the tide of the climate crisis and the resilience as it intensifies. To give preferential treatment to traditional Lenape wisdom, life ways, and understanding of the sacred. We also share the statement from one of the many indigenous peoples threatened by LNG export facilities in the Gulf of Mexico, the Carrizo Comicrudo tribe of Texas, with whom we've been working for several years. They say, we are people who come from all walks of life, 
who adhere to the betterment and welfare of our Carrizo Comecrudo people and maintaining our connections as relatives through our ceremonies, traditions, and languages. Carrizo Comecrudo is not just a tribe and or a nation. It is a way of living. It is the dream of the ancestors to survive and give life to their future generations in spite of downfalls that have haunted every Aboriginal people in the Western Hemisphere. So with criteria being set by our ancestors and elders, we as the Comecruto tribe of Texas present ourselves to our own recognition to the greater good and welfare of Carrizo Comecruto to maintain and preserve our language, culture, and traditions to developing a strong financial foundation for our members in so doing to identify relatives, lands, and ancestors. To the really interment of ancestors, those in museums to be returned for reinterment, including artifacts that are pertinent to the Aboriginal people of Texas. To developing a Texas Indian network, that will be an ad advocate to all Texas tribes to work at the education and re-education of Texas historical events, like the Republic of Rio Grande, to bring a better understanding of our connectedness to the natural order that we are a part of. We will always try to connect the past to the future by living in the present. Our desire to be advocates of peace and harmony among our own people as well as other nations has been one of our greatest traits as we traverse through Texas and beyond. The Carrizo Come Crudo has been hidden well in the pages of history, as they have hidden in present day society. If the hiding was for preservation of survival, poor information gathering by early Europeans, lack of interest in a less aggressive tribe, or poor anthropological interest, or the Christian perspective of peyote, nevertheless, this little written about nation manages to leave historical trails. Today, in the verge of new awakening, the Carrizo Comecruto brings others to their existence, which never faded, just remained hidden. We honor our indigenous friends and coworkers. We're on their land, and we thank them for welcoming us to work with them. That's um, it's a, it's an academic paper. Okay. So that's uh, okay. that's an excerpt from that academic paper. Okay. Well, Mike. Yeah. Let's see. Next we. Oh, okay. So. Um, next we are. I put my glasses back on. Sorry. Next we're doing participant sharing. Um, so, yes. um, as we're um, asking ourselves these questions and talking about it. Um, we invite you to um, ask yourself the same questions and, and talk about it there if, if you're you know if you're in a quiet place. Um, but first, I have to put my glasses on because I can't read them. All right. So um, the first question is: My wish for the new year is, and we'll just pass the mic around. So. Um, I didn't really think about this ahead of time. My wish for the new year is, well, the reason I'm here. I, I, my wish for the new year is that we do finally end fossil fuel expansion and we start to turn around the expanding emissions. Our emissions are still increasing and that is a trend that we need to stop this year. So that's my wish and I'll pass it to Alan. And as a veteran for peace, I have to comment about the horrible, massive contributions of militarism to the climate catastrophe we're facing, and that those have to be held back. And the wars, the many wars. There are so many wars in Africa that we don't even hear about, and then the Ukraine and Gaza wars. All of that, of course, is hardly damaging to the people, but also to the environment and the earth. And Militarism is a huge consumer of fossil fuels, 
and a lot of the wars are because of wanting to control the fossil fuels. All of it is damaging and needs to stop. So we work as climate activists and peace activists to end fossil fuels, end war, get to a stable green energy and world. And that's what I'm always working my wish that I sent out my New Year's greetings today, my electronic greetings to about 100 people on my list. And that's what I said. I, I hope for a more peaceful and green and sustainable planet. I found that this, of the four questions, this was by far the hardest for me. For some reason, um, what do I wish for this year ahead? Um, and, um, the, the best that I could formulate because of so many thoughts and oscillating between fantasy and reality and self-censorship and but I so my earnest wish would be that the um, that the climate capitalists would wake up tomorrow morning and have an epiphany and realize how much they have destroyed the planet and also all of the colonized people and treating all of the planet and all colonized people as if they're expendable, exploitable resources and have this profound epiphany and become laser focused on uh, stopping the, uh, the production of fossil fuels and rapid transitioning to clean energy, 50% reduction by 2030. Barring that, my second wish was that I have the uh, strength and the wisdom to sustain my own fight in this uh, struggle with people that I love and to be able to uh, continue this fight in a way that is also joyous. Yeah, put the mic close to your mouth too, just so we can get the sound coming through. Uh, Gee, my wish is that people in the United States in particular and the world would truly recognize that climate change and climate crisis, not just words, I mean, for Pete's sake, it's all around us, the fires, the floods, the earthquakes that are worse than ever before. And we have a faction that won't believe, we have a lot of people no, we just need to get together and, and recognize this is the problem of our time because I like to say that if we can't really do what we need to do about climate change, no other issue is going to matter because we're not going to be around. And just finally, we all need to recognize that what we do here and burning our fossil fuels and living in our comfortable homes there are people all over the world, for instance, in the Pacific Islands, where their little islands are being swallowed up. And those people, meaning a lot of people in other countries, they have not done anything. And the United States needs to recognize that we, the people with so much money and wealth, we need to step up and help those people. They are people just like us. Andy. Yeah, okay, our next prompt is my wish for President Biden for the new year is, and I'll let you go first, Bill, this time. Well, let me choose my words. Well, okay, so we're right across the street from his residence. Uh, I'll just say I really wish that you would seriously consider to declare a climate emergency. I think if you did that, it would open up a lot of uh, opportunities and legalities and whatever so that things could really be addressed. So that's my wish and good luck in the coming year. If Joe Biden were in front of me, I would say, sir, you've had a long life of doing politics the way you've done them, but times have changed things have changed and we have got to change as a nation, as a government. 
You're the head of this government. Please declare a climate emergency. Please stop funding wars, funding and supplying wars around the world. We have to change or we're going to all be gone real soon. We are facing multiple existential crises and we beg you as the president to take the steps you can to make changes. People need to be helped through the transition. Those of us in Beyond Extreme Energy are begging for an agency that can help that energy transition, that transition away from the way we've lived for several hundred years. It has got to change and you have the power to make some real changes really soon. And we really, really hope you will. Please, President Biden, it is critical. It is absolutely essential. Um, I, I guess I, what I would say to Joe would be, um, if our ch children, our grandchildren have any hope of inheriting a planet that is at all livable, that we must immediately stop fossil fuel production and immediately transition to clean energy. Um, we've already passed a, a 1.5 threshold that was so critical. We're on track right now for, th for three degrees. The difference between 1.5 and three degrees is a difference between having some polar ice caps left that could regenerate and zero polar ice caps left to regenerate. The difference between having some coral reefs left and having zero coral reefs left. And yet no one's taking on these fossil fuel oligarchs. Um, and these massive build outs of LNG in, in the Gulf uh, are the equivalent of 3.9 billion tons of really the nastiest greenhouse gases imaginable, dirtier than the same equivalent of coal greenhouse gases because of the leakage of methane that's so profound on these uh, tankers. So, um, you know, Mr. Biden, like you have the power to right away, and my wish for you is that you wake up in the morning and you immediately call off the, um, the uh, build out of LNG terminals. And if you do that, um, your legacy will be um, immediately um, restored to uh, what you had attempted to do with the um, Inflation Reduction Act. All of that's been wiped out already by the export in the Gulf. Um, and if you don't, um, then your legacy, your the blame will be on your shoulders for the unbridled uh, climate chaos that will be ensuing. So please do the right thing, Joe. Yeah, um, my, my wish for Joe Biden is that you follow the laws of physics rather than the laws or the calculus of politics um, that you're making right now. I mean, I suppose you're in some kind of labyrinth as far as how you can lead, but you're, we really feel your opportunity is to lead as far as taking action on climate change, declaring a climate emergency, stopping the fossil fuel expansion, stopping the LNG exports. If you do that, people will recognize that you're are taking, that you're leading and people will follow. And so you need to understand that. Because right now we're all wandering. We're all wandering, Joe. We're all wandering around, wandering around, wondering when this problem is gonna be solved. And this is your opportunity to take the leadership and solve it. We can't be exporting methane, um, which is what LNG is, just fracked methane that gets piped to the Gulf or piped to, coal, to uh, New Jersey and other export terminals. In Maryland as well, and it, it um, you have to stop. This is your opportunity. We cannot ex we cannot build out all this LNG export and and put all this methane into the atmosphere. The laws of physics are taking over, and they will overwhelm any political calculus that you are using right now. So my wish is that you follow the law of physics. Um, so thank you. So our next prompt is, and we'll let uh, Ellen if you want to go first. It's 
um, if I had to vote for our next president tomorrow, and you know, it's a tough thing right now because it seems like we have a choice between fascism and someone who's like treating the climate like a fascist, because honestly, that's what you're doing, Joe Biden. The difference in climate between you and Donald Trump is not very much. So anyway, I'm sorry, the prompt is, I shouldn't have talked. The prompt is, if I had to vote for uh, our next president tomorrow, Even though with the single big business party, which claims to be Democrats and Republicans, our political system is horrendously broken and it would be a protest vote. I would vote for Cornell West. I've respected him for years. And he understands and speaks properly about what we need to do about climate and about wars and about poverty and about universal health care and so many other things that have just been obstructed for decades. We have to have somebody in every leadership position who understands what has to happen. And I, I live in a state where Biden is likely to win, so I can get put a protest vote without it being a, a throwaway or a, a, a damaging vote that would throw it to Trump, who I certainly don't want to win. But I'm sorry, I don't want President Biden to win either. As Andy said, you continue the old, horrible, damaging climate policies, even though you talk a good game, and yes, with the Inflation Reduction Act, there were some green steps, and it got trumpeted as if it was the best climate policy ever, the best climate bill ever. Sadly, that's true, but that's because there's been almost nothing ever before. So it did a few things, but it also continued the fossil fuel build out, the frac gas LNG export build out, and we cannot keep doing that. So I would vote for Cornell West, and yes, it would be a total protest vote. I am able to do that, and I will just be totally truthful, President Biden and all you Democrats. I haven't voted for a Democrat for president for a long time. Of course, not the Republican either, but I live in a state where I can do that, and I will have to keep doing it. Cornell West has my vote. Pretty much what Ellen said. Um, I, um, it's what I've seen, and I all of us have seen is that um, every time there's a, so any kind of political uh, gamemanship around climate, there never ever do they hold the line when the times get tough. So there's always it's always about 2050. There's all these these grandiose, heartfelt, tear in the eye, uh, BS statements about how much this is an existential threat. Um, and um, I'm so sick of it. I'm sick of the uh, complacency. And to me, it looks like it's, it's deliberate. It, I feel like uh, the Democrats are laughing at us behind their back. And the Republicans are just totally, uh, you know, I, I don't even waste time talking about the Republicans because they're so, at least they're like honest about how much they just don't give a shit about our planet. Um, but Democrats, I feel like they're, they're, they, they lie with impunity. And, and the IRA, though, it, there was good things about the Inflation Reduction Act, but it's all carrots. It's all carrots. And everyone's afraid. Joe, you were afraid to use a stick. You're afraid to say no. You're afraid to stand up. I, how can I respect you when you know that how, how deadly these decisions are? So you could, you could still convince me that um to vote for you you still could but you would have to start unequivocally by declaring a climate emergency by uh by shutting down the lng exports not just the existing uh the, the work in progress but also the existing exports uh and become unequivocal an unequivocal and courageous champion of doing the right thing by getting off of uh, fossil fuel you do that you have my vote. Otherwise, Cornell West. Yeah. Um, so the last presidential election, um, 
I worked to help you get elected, Mr. Biden. I called into three or four different states. I text banked. And um, a lot of us worked really hard because you said you were going to do something um, about climate change. Um, and again, we don't say the IRA. We've already talked about it. It was a little bit of good. It was not enough. It's market driven and the market has been failing us for decades and decades. And our, our, our children's future is too important to rely on the market. And um, don't you remember Alan Greenspan's hubris when, you know, he had to admit that, you know, he messed up. The market is not the solution to everything. So, um, so you, you violated my trust, Mr. Biden. I work for you. And you didn't say what you were going to do, which is often the case with politicians because you have to work in the political world. But in this case, with the future of the planet at stake, it's too much. And as we try to get progress on climate action, we learn that everything is connected. Uh, we learn that, you know, poor people are affected by fossil fuels more than the rest of us. And it kind of goes from there and it's all connected. And it's connected to what's happening in Palestine. Um, that's genocide, um, that's stealing people's land. And that's how we got here in the first place. That's how we got our earth to the brink of uh, all of us going extinct. So unless you call, so if we were gonna vote tomorrow, you'd have to work very fast because you would have to uh, halt LNG exports, you have to declare a climate emergency, and you would have to stop supporting the Zionist state of Israel and work seriously toward freeing the people in Palestine from apartheid. If you don't do those two things before tomorrow, I don't have to vote tomorrow, but you have some time before November, and if you don't do those two things, I'm not voting for anybody. Um, yeah, go ahead, Bill. Well, wow, this is a hard question. Um, I think a lot of people would say, oh, it's easy. We're going to vote for A or we're going to vote for B. We're not going to vote for B or we're not going to vote for A. I don't think it is not that easy. If I would, and my answer is a little complicated. If I were going to vote for the person who I think has the most intellect, the right ideas for 2024, my vote would be for Cornel West. And if you think he's a radical guy, I would say go out on the internet and find an interview or a speech of his. Listen for one hour. The man has, in my opinion, all the right ideas for what this country needs. Now, as a political matter, I, I may vote for someone else. But anyway, and I, I did want to say, Mr. Biden, you need to remember the black people of the United States were instrumental in getting you elected. And I must say, I don't think you've done enough for black people. Yeah, we could point to different things. We have a black uh, Supreme Court justice now, and that's wonderful. But I think you really need to look around and your advisors and say, we need to do more in this coming year unless you want them to walk away from you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. So our last prompt before we sing for a while is, um, I find hope we will survive the climate emergency in. So, um, yeah, I mean, the four of us are probably a little bit different than the average person on the street because we are climate activists and organizers so we're we feel this stuff intensely but yeah i'm sorry uh, why don't you go first bill well um first uh the question itself is um really an important question um and i and it's not a question uh that um that should be answered glibly or quickly usually when uh when people answer too fast for a question like, where do you find hope? It's usually a dodge or some kind of, um, you know, some sort of wishful thinking. And I think to find hope um, in this very, very dark, very, very dire moment that we're in, 
it, it takes some serious digging to f find that hope, I think. Anyway, maybe it may be others are more gifted that way. Um, so honestly, what I what propels me now is more is despair. Like I I just feel so much uh, anger and despair and and uh, when when I'm not uh, when I am paying attention and I try to pay attention, uh, but I don't always. But when I do, um, what I mostly find is despair. And what propels me towards hope is is action. It is actually being out here right now. Uh, and um, I'm not tr I'm not saying that like let's it's from sort of like we're superior than anyone. That's not it at all. It's just that. Um, you know, and for all the folks who might be listening in, um, probably all of you are activists, so you already know this too. Um, there's much to be said for um, de pushing through despair and act and being active is a beautiful, transformative uh, thing to do. That's constructive and it um, and it and it's empowering. So um, I guess that's a long way of saying I find hope in um, activism itself. Yeah, um, I I uh, find hope in the people that I've met in this struggle. I'm um, naturally a shy person, but um, but I've met so many wonderful people who um, understand the adversity that we face and yet um, are trying trying to solve the problem uh, rather than giving up, and that gives me hope. And those same people lead with love, and that also gives me hope. And I think, um, I think you know, there's a CNN poll that um, showed um, you know that the people in the United States really want you to take stronger, more rapid action, President Biden. And and I feel like you know. Um, this is going to be kind of a funny analogy, but I, I feel like, you know, so we interact with the police sometimes when we do demonstrations and we, um, you know, we, we're nonviolent, but um, but sometimes we're in the way or uh, or disrupting uh, a meeting. And so we get them, we, you know, uh, get into altercations with the police. And um, I think first responders are actually quietly on our side. They know that the shit is about to hit the fan and their jobs are going to get increasingly harder and harder and almost impossible. So I feel like people are ready and, um, you know, maybe there's a leader who will spark what we need. I don't know. How's that question phrased again? Oh, sorry. It says, um, I find hope we will survive the climate emergency in. Okay. I guess I thought the end was supposed to be a year, and I have no idea oh. what year this should be. Yeah, no. Okay, just, the yeah. hope I find yeah. in. Uh, if we look at the four faces here, we're all old guys, old elders, oldsters. But um, when I think about the climate, I always say it's a beautiful world I live in. I take this dog here out in the woods and she loves the streams. I want a beautiful world for my granddaughters and my children, of which I have quite a few. That's all. And that's where my hope is for them. Yeah, thank you, Bill. All right, so. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My bad. <laughs> I find hope, as, as others have said, in the activism and the people we work with. I always have hope because we are still struggling and because we don't know what's going to happen. There can be total shocks and amazements, and uh, I think some of them will be awful, frankly. I don't have a lot of optimism. There's a difference between optimism and hope. I think we've gone too far to avoid some really terrible shocks to our economy, to our energy system, obviously. The shock would be much less if we voluntarily stopped fossils right now and did the transition we have to do. It would have been easier if we'd done it 10 or 20 years ago. 
But I'm afraid we're going to have some awful shocks and catastrophes. But the sooner we begin to make the transition we must, the sooner we'll avoid those or lessen them. So I don't have a lot of optimism. I think we've gone way too far and done way too much damage to avoid some terrible, catastrophic situations. We're already having more, more extreme climate, more climate refugees, all kinds of terrible things. It's not like it's not already happening, and it's going to get worse. I have no question of that, so I'm not optimistic, but I do have hope. I have hope because of my activist friends and colleagues and the ones I don't know all over the world. And yes, the large percentages of polls that show that people want a major change of how we do business, of how we do energy. And sadly, what the people want, what the polls show, doesn't translate instantly into our government doing what they know we want. We have to push them and we have to keep pushing them. And that's what the activism is. And yeah, sometimes we verbally <laughs> have altercations with authority figures. We are nonviolent. We don't intend to hurt anyone. We're trying to keep people from being hurt. But we are obstructive. We are disruptive. We have to be. So the ongoing work and struggle together gives me hope, but not optimism. I feel to make a point, I've mentioned that we're older folks here, and a reason for that. Ellen and I have often talked about that we're not going to be here when the shit really hits the fan, when things get worse. We've already seen, for instance, the smoke from Canada, maybe the most real sign that struck home here. But it's the people who will be here, the younger people, and the younger people in our country are the people who are most aware, and they know that their futures are on the line. And so we want to stand with the younger people and encourage younger people to stand up to. Thank you, Bill. Go climate defiance. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I, I lost my glasses. I think we're going to sing now, right? So, yeah, um, we haven't rehearsed any of these songs. Um, so, yeah, we'll give it a shot anyway. Let's try and get together. All right, so the first song is, uh, and we published our run of, we tweeted out our run of show, which has a link to these songs. So, yeah, you can sing along if you want to. Um, I don't, I don't think I know the What's this one? If somebody can go so, first, Bill. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, here, I'll give it. I'll give it I think you should hold the mic during this because you have the best voice. So, okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. And export of LNG, the people and the water will go free. And exports of LNG, the people and the water will go free. And exports of LNG, the people of the Gulf Coast need to breathe free. And exports of LNG, the people of the Gulf Coast need to breathe free. Right, the next one. So we'll do the last verse two times. Yeah. Okay. I guess good. so. All right. <laughs> Somebody can point to the mine. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I think okay. I can do that. Okay. All right. Okay. The people gonna rise like the water. We're gonna shut this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Keep it in the ground." People gonna rise like the water. Gonna shut this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Keep it in the ground. Man, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we sound a little more harmonious on the first one. I don't know, but I, I'm tone deaf, so I, you know, forgive us. Yeah. We're just trying <laughs> to keep the next concert. Yeah. That's right. Um, so now this one is call and response. Okay. So, if it's okay, I'll do the call and everyone do their 
Okay. So basically, Wait. everyone, you just say whatever I whatever say. You say. I try not to be a fascist. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Forget like your perfect offering. Forget your perfect offering. Just ring the bells that still can ring. Just ring the bells that still can ring. There is a crack in everything. There is a crack in everything. That's how, That's how the, light the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. That's how, That's how the light That's how gets in. That's how the light gets in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Selling tickets yet for our next song? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah is, is Dick Clark dead yet? Is he? Uh, I, think, oh, I no. think he is. I'm sorry, Dick. That was rude. Love you, Dick. Rest in peace, Dick. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay. I don't think I know the two. Okay, this one's um, um, also is a kind of a mellow song. Okay. And it goes, um, <clears throat> and the people of the Gulf say, LNG away. And the water in the Gulf say, LNG away. And the winds in the sky say, LNG away. And the fire in our hearts say, LNG away. And the earth beneath our feet say, LNG away. And then this goes on. We're going to stand up for the water, for the sacred land we honor. We're going to stand up for the water, for the sacred land we honor. And the people of Port Arthur say, LNG, no way. And the people of Lake Charles say, LNG, no way. And the Blackwell Parish say, LNG, no way. And the Cameron Parish say, LNG, no way. And the Corpus Christi people say, LNG, no way. And the Cove Point people say, LNG, no way. We're going to stand up for the water. For the sacred land we honor, we're going to stand up for the water, for the sacred land we honor. Uh, thank you for putting code. I was thinking of yes. adding that. In the yeah, so yeah. we have to say that um, um, we uh, many uh, we're sort of involved with a group called Beyond Extreme Energy here, and Beyond Extreme Energy actually formed. Uh, when people were protesting the Cove Point, then import, uh, LNG import facility. So, yeah, anyway, uh, the next song. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We just mentioned Corpus Christi in this song, Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus Christi is on the beach, and I was once there quite a few years ago with my daughter's family, and the beach itself is quite nice, but if you look over your shoulder, you see the infrastructure of gas and oil and the smell is in the air. And with that respect, you know, that's on the Gulf Coast. Um, part of what we wanted to say here is, President Biden, you've done a, a good job of keeping the beaches in Delaware, Rehoboth Beach, Bethany Beach, which I've enjoyed. They're very nice, they're very pretty. and. You should, I think you can take some credit for that. But what we have to remember is there are many, many people living on the Gulf of Mexico and, and related areas. A lot of people who are not very well off and they're, they're breathing terrible air. They're having problems with cancer and asthma. And it's great what you've done in Delaware, but we need to think of the people in the Gulf Coast and, and not the, not just the infrastructure of gas and oil and, and LNG down there. We ask you to please take a look and don't keep approving those LNG terminals. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. All right. Okay. And so this is, um, there are more 
Quarters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more forests burning, this I know, this I know. There are more forests burning, this I know. There are more forests burning, they are kind of way to me. There are more forests burning, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. There are more mountains falling, they will find their way to me. There are more mountains falling, this I know. I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will wade through the waters when they find their way to me. I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know. I will walk through the fires when they find their way to me. I will walk through the fires, this I know. There are more people rising, this I know, this I know. There are more people rising, this I know. There are more people rising, they will find their way to me. There are more people rising, this I know. We did it. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> we were getting better as with each song, I think. All right, so, yeah. Um, all right, so this next thing really is audience participatory. We're going to set up these, uh, there's 16 either 15 or 16 chants that we're going to go through. And um, we originally were going to be uh, uh, at a place about uh, a quarter of a mile from here and then walk in. But we decided to just to come straight here. And we were going to be chanting these while we were walking. But we're going to chant them now. So first thing we're going to do, and you do this with us, is we're together going to just... Uh, Rapid fire, chant each one and then the next one. And uh, the four of us will do it together. So let's see if we can get them set up. And uh, are, is this chant two, Andy, or is it just this one? No, it's both of them. Oh, okay. So, yeah, maybe, uh, let's see. Can Ellen, can you that? check with the camera to see if they oh, yeah, are? Oh, yeah, yeah, they can uh, see. You can do that. I think maybe come this way a little bit. Yep. See them? Uh, I don't, see them. They're not oh, terribly oh, readable. Uh, they're not really readable. Should we put them like? Yeah. Bring them closer, yeah. Watch out, Amber. Come on, Amber. Good dog. You there really, you go. Really good. Really good. Stick right there. It's on the left side. How's that? That's better. Okay. okay. Yep. Um. All right, so um, we'll start here and work our way down. This is the first part of the chant, the second. First part of the chant, the second. Should I get my drum or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Right. Yes. We'll wake up the Secret Service people. <laughs> <laughs> rhythm, yeah. Yay, rhythm. Amber? Come. Come. Yeah, oh, let's, doing let's great. get you away from the tripod a little, sweetie. Go back to where dad. Come on. When the night comes, I'll let you. See okay. what happens when you hand me a microphone? <laughs> no, you. Uh, what do you, do you know what time it is? Oh, uh, yeah. It's probably like 2 a.m. <laughs> no, it's 11. <laughs> 11? A few I minutes. Four sure. minutes to 11. Yeah. Oh, we're doing good on time. Yeah.
Bill was a consummate bucket should, drummer. I think you should show your Water drum. jug drummer. Yes, do show, show the drum. drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta get in the, in the camera view here somehow, Bill. Okay. Just one cameo. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to hear it there. Like, like so that. you should probably. I mean, I mean, I think I know the cadence of these, but you maybe you want me. Uh, if I mess up, it'll be fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. So again, we're all four going to do all six, fifteen or sixteen, and so on your mark, get set, go. Okay. USA, USA is top order. order. Why on earth is getting shorter? Put an end to CP2. Venture Global's toxic spew. Your reasoning is weak. Tanker ships leak. Keep the gas under the grass. Keep the oil under the soil. Do we want these terminals? No fracking way. Fossil fuels kill. Pipelines fill. Cut the crap and the greed. Give the world what we need. Climate change is not a lie. Do not let our planet die. We defend the rights of water and the sacred land we honor. No MP, no LNG. This is a climate emergency. The planet's future is imperiled. You're killing off the natural world. Lusting after profit? Stop it, stop it, stop it. Hear the suffering and the sadness caused by your export madness. The CP2 is DOA. We won't let you look away. Tick, tick, tock, tock. Mr. Biden, time is up. Okay, those were so good. That now we're going to do it like going around. So um, that means I'll do the first one, and then Bill, you do the second one. Other Bill, you do the third one, and we'll keep doing we'll go through all 16 that way. You ready? So, wait, so you're going to do both of those? Yeah, I'll do both of those. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You ready? And maybe I should pass the mic around. Let's do this. And you're doing one. So we'll just go, we'll yeah. just go this way. Yeah. We'll go Bill, I mean, um, Andy, Ellen, Bill, Bill, Andy, Ellen. Okay, I'll go that way. All yeah. Right. All right, ready? Yeah. All right. USA is the top exporter while life on Earth is getting shorter. <laughs> Put an end to CP2. Venture Global's toxic spew. Your reasoning is weak. Tanker ships leak. Keep the gas under the grass. Keep the oil under the soil. Do we want these terminals? No fracking way! Fossil fuels kill, pipelines spill. Cut the crap and the greed, give the world what we need. Climate change is not a lie. Do not let our planet die. We defend the rights of water and the sacred land we honor. No MVP, no LNG. This is a climate emergency. The planet's future is imperiled. You're killing off the natural world. Why doesn't that rhyme? Okay. <laughs> More like in pearl, but... <laughs> Lusting after profit. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Hear the suffering and the sadness caused by your export madness? The CP2 is DOA. We won't let you look away. Tick tock, tick tock. Mr. Biden, the time is up. All right. Now, <laughs> now we're going to do the same thing, oh, no. sort of, except we'll switch on the call and response. So I'll... Well, so I'll say USA is the top exporter and then every, pass it. And then, uh, yeah, all right. Oh, wait, but everybody says the answer, and then the next person does the... Oh, yeah, that's a good one. You want to do it that way? I think everybody ought to do the response. Yeah, yeah. that's a good uh, idea. Yeah. Okay. So, and then and then after that one, we're going to do the cacophony version, the munchie and scream. That's what we're all looking forward to. All right. So, uh, so that means I'm doing the first one. Okay, ready? Yeah. USA is the top exporter. Wow. Well, 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 Put an end to CP2. Venture Global's toxic spew. Your reasoning is weak. Tanker ships leak. Keep the gas 
under the grass. Keep the oil under the soil. Do we want these terminals? No fucking way. Fossil fuels kill. Pipeline spill. Cut the crap and the greed. Give the world what we need. Climate change is not a lie. Do not let our planet die. We defend the rights of water and the sacred land we honor. No MVP, no LNG. This is a climate emergency. The planet's future is imperiled. You're killing off the natural world. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. Lusting after profit. Stop, stop it, stop it, stop, stop it. it. Hear the suffering and the sadness caused by your export madness. The CP2 is DOA. We, we won't, won't let you look away. away. Tick tock, tick tock. Mr. Biden, the time is up. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Oh, wait, the cacophony. All right, now. All right. <laughs> so this, this version, uh, we're just... With the four of us, and you can join in if you're watching the live stream, just say whichever chant you want randomly, and we'll do it for, what, I don't know, about 30 seconds to see how much noise we can make, and uh, we'll try and put this the mic in the middle, so I'll, I'll just move it around. All right. Okay. On your mark, get set, go. is weak. Tanker ships leak. I bet that sounded great, didn't it? I oh, thought that was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, action um, helping you with despair. And, yeah. Right. I mean, Amen. Silliness helps, too. Silliness helps, too. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, where are we in the program here? Can you hold that for a second? Hold that. Yes. I think we are at the oh, the land back and reparations oh, yes. statement. So, You're read that. so if, oh. you, if you do the land back, I'll do the reparations. So you don't have to do both of them. Got it. Okay. Oh. Here, I'll hold the flashlight. Oh, I, you hold the uh, mic. Okay, yeah, you hold the yeah. Yeah, okay. oh, Sorry. Okay. I'm going to read about land back and reparations. You say, what is that? Okay. I'm going to read the conclusion of an academic paper called Achieving Climate Justice Through Land Back, an Overview of Tribal Disposition, Dispossession, Land Return Efforts, and Practical Me Mechanisms for Land Back. It was written by Vanessa Racehorse and Anna Hohoff. Please bear with me, I'm reading by flashlight. Land Back is a social and environmental justice movement that is not only a reckoning of our nation's past, but also a crucial component in achieving climate justice moving forward. The historical dispossession of indigenous lands led to the overexploitation of our country's natural resources, a major contributor to the climate change crisis our global community now faces. Indigenous communities are uniquely invested in this issue as many are experiencing the impacts of climate change firsthand and often stand at the forefront of resisting further development of massive extractive projects. While indigenous land use is complicated and diverse, there remains an inextricable link between traditional native land management and reverence for the land that sustains us all. This has led to numerous stakeholders, including federal, state, and local governments, 
as well as local organizations and land trusts recognizing the key role that tribes can play as meaningful partners and leaders in environmental conversation. Conservation. Sorry. Conservation. Okay. Given that indigenous, given that indigenous worldviews, cultures, and spiritualities are inherently grounded on a special moral responsibility to and relationship with their communities, their surrounding waters and lands, and the survival thereof for future generations. Indigenous stewardship is a key part to solving today's very urgent and comp complicated problem we all face. We share demands for reparations, including as articulated by the movement for black lives. Quote, we demand reparations for past and continuing harms. The government responsible corporations and other institutions that have profited off of the harm they've inflicted on black people from colonialism to slavery through food and housing redlining mass incarceration and surveillance must repair the harm done this includes Reparations for the systematic denial of access to high quality educational opportunities in the form of full and free access for all black people, including undocumented and currently formerly incarcerated people, to lifetime education, including free access and open admissions to public community colleges and universities, technical education, i.e. technology, trade, and agricultural, educational support programs, retroactive forgiveness of student loans, and support for learning, lifetime learning programs. Also includes reparations for the continued divestment from discrimination toward and exploitation of our communities in the form of a guaranteed minimal livable income for all black people with clearly articulated corporate regulations. Includes reparations for the wealth extracted from our communities through environmental racism, slavery, food apartheid, housing discrimination, and racialized capitalism in the form of corporate and government reparations focused on healing ongoing physical and mental trauma, and ensuring our access and control of food sources, housing, and land. This is long. We're getting near the end. It's important stuff. Okay. Including reparations for the cultural and educational exploitation, erasure, and extraction of our communities in the form of mandated public school curriculums that critically examine the political, economic, and social impacts of colonialism and slavery, and funding to support, build, preserve, and restore cultural acts, assets and sacred sites to ensure the recognition and honoring of our collective struggles and triumphs includes, finally, legislation at the federal and state level that requires the United States to acknowledge the lasting impacts of slavery, establish and execute a plan to address those impacts. This includes the imminent passage of H.R. 40, the Commission to Study Reparation Proposals for African American Act, or subsequent versions which call for reparations remedies. Let me say one thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we, one thing you know, we say at the beginning of that is we believe that land back and reparations are required to heal the land in which we live, as well as those of us living in it. So we need to heal ourselves and our land. And we feel that those are two things that are part of that healing. So thank you, Bill. All right, um, so next in the program, we have um, prayers, uh, meditations, and poetry that we're going to take turns reading. And so we'll do that.
and maybe Bill, do you want to start us off? Oh, sure. So we're going to have to oh, oh, pass Andy, papers around, so bear with us. Andy, would you like to start because the, um, the first uh, poem is the one that your um, oh, yeah, yeah. daughter made the really beautiful poster. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the, uh, let me get to the sheet. Let's see if we can move this um, uh, easel over to it. I think it. I think it's snowing. Oh I think it's snowing, right? I think it might be. Yes. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Um, so Andy, oh, really? can you step back a little? Because I'd love to get the. Um, oh, sorry. The, uh, the beautiful uh, poster there. Oh, perfect, perfect, yeah. perfect. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Stand right. Am I in the way now? Um, Ellen, Ellen, can you back up just a little bit because I want to get the uh, the kite and the. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read um, the poem you see on that left panel there. Uh, if I must die, by uh, Rafat Alarir. I, I apologize if I did not say that name properly. If I must die, you must live. To tell my story. Sell my things, buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, waiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made flying up above and thinks for a moment an angel is there bringing back love if I must die let it bring hope let it be a tale if I must die yeah I apologize that's the first time I've read that aloud and I, I butchered it a little bit I'm so sorry to the person who wrote that who's no longer with us um, yeah. Uh, Ellen, you want to do the second one? Uh, poem. Why do you take by force? A question was posed to John Smith by the chief of the Powhatan Confederacy after there had been some aggressive act by colonists. Why do you take by force what you may have quietly, I love? Why will you destroy us who supply you with food? What can you get by war? We are unarmed and willing to give you what you ask. If you come in a friendly manner and not with swords and guns, as if to make war on an enemy. Lone Goose by Two Foo. Lone Goose in flight never eats or drinks, just calls out longing for its flock. Who pities it? A flake of shadow lost beyond 10,000 billows of clouds. It stares far off as if glimpses of them remain. Sorrows mount. It can almost hear them. Their teeth thought all unraveled. Crows squawk and three confusions of scatter. I have found ways not to shut up by Maury Johnson. 
August 2021. I decided that if they were going to go through with this, I was going to make sure that this, meaning the MVP, was the most scrutinized piece of pipe ever put in the ground anywhere in the world. They thought I'd shut up, and I found ways to not shut up. A year ago, I didn't yeah, know Maury, if you are watching this, uh, we hope you're safe and warm and not on the road, and we love you so much, Maury. Amen. All right. Um, this is called uh, Go Stop Something Horrible, Rock or Stones Mountain in Fall for Phil. By Pat Pat. Mountains move as chromatic collection, long range, interacting filter, wind, water, rock, waves and bolts of light, soil, life, plasma. Mountains conduct earth to sky, very high. Sky to earth, water to rock, to water to rock, infinitely. Plasma. Mountains, bones, valley to ridge, two and more, insolute, ocean skin, shedding waters, elements and eons, trundling light, plasma. Mountain is a pollinating cell, pressure solution, honey of rock through ocean of water and air, filaments, tendrils, roots, conducted to blossom in your blood, vessel of time, plasma. A mountain in fall is an aerial climb for 50 or more or so bumblebees up from ground colony, circumnavigating mother's love to nurture plasma. A mountain in fall is an uncertain time for 50 or more or so bumblebees, could be last foraging only the mother herself, our dearest, lives on our plasma. And for the one, last foraging, bold and determined, love is plasma. The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free. This was uh, written by Chief Seattle South Susquamish Chief. All things are connected. Teach your children that what we have taught our children, that the earth is our mother. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the sons of the earth. If men spit upon the ground, they spit upon themselves. This we know, the earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. This we know, all things are connected like the blood that unites one's family. All things are connected. Consider the light of trees by Cedric Wright. Aside from the axe, what trees acquire from man is inconsiderable. What man may acquire from trees is immeasurable. From their mute forms, there flows a poise in silence, a lovely sound and motion in response to wind. What peace comes to those aware of the voice and bearing of trees. Trees do not scream for attention. 
A tree, a rock, has no pretense, only a real growth out of itself, in close communion with the universal spirit. A tree retains a deep serenity. It establishes in the earth not only its root system, but also those roots of its beauty and its unknown consciousness. Sometimes one may sense a glisten of that consciousness, and with such perspective, feel that man is not necessarily the highest form of life. Fireworks in the distance, so I keep thinking it's New Year's, but we have another. We have some while. This is For All by Gary Snyder. Ah, uh, sorry, let me show Ah, to be alive on a mid September morn, fording a stream, barefoot, pants rolled up, holding boots, pack on. Sunshine, ice in the shallows, northern Rockies. Rustle and shimmer of icy creek waters, stones turn underfoot, small and hard as toes, cold nose dripping, singing inside. Creek music, heart music, smell of sun on gravel. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the soil of Turtle Island and to the beings who thereon dwell, one ecosystem, in diversity, under the sun, with joyful interpenetration for all. Amen. When the animals come to us by Gary Lawless, when the animals come to us asking for our help, will we know what they are saying? When the plants speak to us in their delicate, beautiful language, will we be able to answer them? When the planet herself sings to us in our dreams, will we be able to wake ourselves and act? Water flows from high in the mountains. Water runs deep in the earth. Miraculously, water comes to us and sustains us. Water flows over these hands. May I use them skillfully to preserve our precious planet. Written by Dick Not Hong. What are you? What am I? Intersecting cycles of water, earth, air, and fire. That's what I am. That's what you are. Fire. Fire from our sun that fuels all life, drawing up plants and raising the waters to the sky to fall again, replenishing. The inner furnace of your metabolism burns with the fire of the Big Bang that first sent matter energy spinning through space and time. And the same fire as the lightning that flashed into the primordial soup, catalyzing the birth of organic life. You were there. I was there. For each cell of our bodies is transcended in an, in an unbroken chain from that event. John Seed and Joanna Macy. Uh, this is by Susan Griffin. As I go into the earth, she pierces me. She pierces my heart. As I penetrate further, she unveils me. When I have reached her center, I am weeping openly. 
I have known her all my life, yet she reveals stories to me, and these stories are revelation, and I am transformed. Her wounds caress me. I feel her pain, and my own pain comes into me. My own pain grows large, and I grasp this pain with my hands, and I open my mouth to this pain. I taste. I know. I know why she goes on, under great weight, with great thirst, in drought, in starvation, with intelligence in every act that she survived disaster. The earth is my sister. I love her daily grace, her silent daring, and how loved I am. How we admire this strength in each other, all that we have lost, all that we have suffered, all that we know. We are stunned by this beauty. And I do not forget what she is to me, what I am to her. Uh, so, we didn't time this, and at this point, we were going to be hoping, hoping we were close to midnight, and we have another oh, like 11.30. 11.30. Um, so, there's a couple things we could do. Uh, here, I'll put the mic down. We'll talk about what we want to do without the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we could, um, I did bring something to drink. We could have a drink real quick. I mean, it's not alcoholic, but this is what we want to share. Drink. Yeah. You got trail mix? Mm -hmm. All good. right, if I have a quick party. quick snack? Yep. All right. Yep. All right, well, we're going to share some food. And what do we think? Do we want to do? I mean, after we do that, do we want to wait till midnight, or we want to sing before midnight? How are we feeling about it? <laughs> well, we're off now. We're just we're just doing that. No, we're still live streaming. Okay. We can. That's well, right. We can. We can have a community uh, uh, agreement meeting <laughs> <laughs> all over the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like to wait till midnight. It's only midnight. yeah. I would yeah. too. And midnight is a okay. A what are we going to do in the dead time though for our? All right, well, let me let me get the drinks, and we'll see how much time that okay. passes. All right. So um, I'm going to tell you about these drinks. So um, they're, uh, oh gosh. Um, so the drinks are um, hemp milk and flaxseed milk cool. um, flavored with, since it's New Year's, flavored with not only maple syrup, but also lavender vanilla. So I think it's very wow. tasty. Yeah. But, um, that sounds wonderful. I am really into hemp, and I, I met a person from XRDC uh, not too long ago who's like studying hemp and agricultural, like, you know, going to get a degree yeah, in it and stuff. And, you know, uh, we could, everything that's plastic could be, could be made out of hemp. That's right. And so much wow. that we eat, uh, hemp is a wonderful source of protein. But anyway, let me get the drinks and, and we'll share that. It grows without the need for fertilizers and pesticides and even as much water yeah. as other materials. Why in the world did we stop growing hemp? Because we got paranoid about its relationship but not its identicality with marijuana. Yeah. And it's an important crop in Kentucky, I believe, which is why Mitch McConnell supports legalized hemp. I th I'm sure it's been legal. It's been avoided though. Uh, yeah. Some places, it's actually. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. Turn the mic off. Yeah. He is so. Kentucky, yeah. yeah. But I don't think you can. I, I, I don't. It's not easy to grow it. It's okay. not. Well, for in no, no way. Maybe in Kentucky it is. I wish I had an amazing story to say about this Trader Joe's trail mix. <laughs> However, I don't. Yeah, you don't have a bowl or something. Yeah. It's an Amber's bowl. <laughs> Amber is going to become interested in a few minutes. Oh, nice basket, Andy. I like that. Yeah, it has nice wine glasses in it. That's why I grabbed it. <laughs> So we're going to have our hemp and whatever else milk in wine glasses. <laughs> 
Yes. Oh, that's cool. Wow. So there is hemp like in This is a picnic. Um, so, uh, yeah, I actually, um, it's made from um, hemp seed and mm. flax seed. Flax. I actually, flax. I actually like, like it better when it's all hemp seed, but the hemp seed is more expensive to buy than flax yeah. seed. So. Do we have to like it? <laughs> um, no, you don't. Oh, we will. But we will. I, you know, I when I drink like bovine milk now, or when I try it, or I, I don't drink it anymore, but when I, you know, taste it occasionally, I just, it's like awful, you know? Hemp milk is so much better. Amber, no, 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 Whoopsie. no, Amber. Uh, uh, come on. There's actually no food in there, Amber. Ooh, this look a little bit cloudy. Oh, well. She just wants to smell whatever it is. They are plastic, but they are they are reusable. We, we don't. Yes. What a wonderful picnic set! I love it. Oh, here, Billy. I got one. And you made yeah. this. Oh, did I get right. one early? Yeah. You made this. Yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't make it. All I did was put in a machine that ground the seeds and put the water in. Well. Mother Nature made it, of course. Yeah. may not like it. So. It's sort of like, like eggnog, right? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Eggnog. Eggnog, right. Where's the name egg? <laughs> I should have brought some. Is it good? Good. See? <laughs> well, we have to have a toast, too. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, my. I was... That's all right. You can be an early That's taster. <laughs> oh, you're not going to like it either? No, I just want to make sure that I know. <laughs> Is it warm? No. It should be cold. It was okay. I made it was made with cold water cold. and it's been in the refrigerator and then it's been very cold. Yeah. Okay, uh, and we, where's mine? We should each do a toast. I'll do the first one um, to hemp milk and hemp for everyone. To our earth, which is kind of why we're here. Yes indeed. And to William <laughs> and Ellen. Andy. All right, we got all those. To all the other creatures whose lives we also threaten. And to all of our grandchildren and all of the life to come after us, may they inherit a life that's rich and rewarding. Cheers. Hurry up, y'all. Yeah, it's starting to precipitate. Yes. I meant to whatever you said. <laughs> nice. Mm. I wouldn't know how to describe it, but it's good. Yeah, this, I mean, with the lavender and the and the um, vanilla in it, it's it's definitely yeah. a different flavor. When I, I, I yeah. normally don't put that, that stuff in it. And it's yeah. done. Uh, if you make it all from hemp seed, it tastes a little bit like like mowing the grass. You know, oh, it's like nice. wow, I yeah. feel like I, I ate a lawnmower bottom. You know, like <laughs> grass collects. But mm -hmm. it sounds awful, but it, mm -hmm. once you get used to it, it tastes really good. Yeah, and the then, smell yeah. of mown grass is wonderful, so I bet it tastes yeah. good too. I mean, there are some um, Japanese teas that have a very grassy. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're Chinese teas. I'm not sure, but have a very yeah. grassy yeah. flavor. That it's an acquired taste, but it's actually very nice. Very but good, Andy. Some, I like it. Yeah. Good. All right, everybody out there, go Cheers. get some hemp milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. Hemp yeah. everything. Well, really, I mean, it, it is just absurd. It used to be a very important agricultural product. Most of our founding fathers yeah. grew sure. it. Or about a lot of them half, did. About half. Okay. But then the drug war came along. Thank and you. Thank you. Okay. Good. good. And yeah. it is not marijuana. It's related. But out of paranoia and drug insanity. And of course, there's nothing wrong with marijuana. I, I agree with that too, but it is not the same thing, even yeah. if you have a problem with it. A little bit of THC floating around in there. <laughs> so it's high in protein, mm -hmm. super refreshing. It's very quenching. It is good. I like it. And you know, I'm a skeptic, as you could tell. Like, 
I, things that I haven't eaten before. Yeah. The lavender really, I mean, I've, I, this is the first time I ever put lavender in it. And it really, I mean, this is, to me, this is like, you know, yeah. amazing. It's but. very, it's not over, it's not overbearing though. It's just, it's just enough. It's just yeah. It's really nice. And it is milky too. Yep. Can you froth this like on latte? I don't think it. I don't think it has the same body that, that cow's milk does. I mean, um, I don't think I've tried to do that. Maybe they get to paint. Thank you, Andy. Oh, no, you're welcome. You bring that. Maybe they get to paint the gate once a year. Maybe they, do. Maybe they get to paint and it. And there's once a year. four plates that so we can pour some. Oh yeah, yeah. You have plates. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Let's use plates for the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not too many are there in the ground. You can have a plate if you want. Oh. I want a plate. From where? From oh. there. Okay. Okay. See some cashews in there. Oops. 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 Now, no baby, just because I encourage you. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could also read our press release. We should probably do oh, that. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. That'll get us pretty, that'll get us pretty close really yeah. yeah. I read the LTEs, which is that you sent that. Yeah, that, the, that inspired me to what I said. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. The press release has most of what was in the letter to the editor, mm -hmm. if not everything, plus a little bit more, I think. So I think we were going to read one, we would read the press release. And where did the press release go? Well, let's see. It went to about 10 different local papers local to yeah. here mm -hmm. and then to the local TV stations in you know Philadelphia and then just a few radio stations mm -hmm. and Maple sent it to Ford Fisher I think mm -hmm. but yeah, I didn't hear anything from mm -hmm. Ford Fisher thank you Maple Fortified now, and a couple more hours at least. <laughs> well, sweet. Let's stay you here the whole year. <laughs> we could at least watch the sun come up. <laughs> really good mix. Yeah. Got some salt in it. I really feel, feel bad. If I had known I was going to read that poem, I would have read it a couple of times. You did good. Or, no, it was fine. It was, yeah. It was apparently that song. a really beloved teacher. Yeah. And a mentor for, yeah. a, you know, for a lot of like uh, writers and poets. That, you know, yeah. They taught um, uh, literature. when he wrote that song. Do we know? Pretty shortly before he died, I think. Mm -hmm. He did, you know, see it coming. Yeah. Although God knows the people of Gaza have been able to see it coming for decades. One of the um, Baltimore poems I wrote was about the, um, the first airplane that flew over Baltimore. 
and um, my concept of the poem was uh, a man and his daughter were flying their kite at Druid Lake and the, and the first airplane, oh, wow. or no, they went there. They went there specifically because they knew the airplane was going to be there, but they had their kite there. And their kite was made out of the wedding dress of the dead mother. She does not like fireworks. It, we got out of the car down there. She was just fine, smelling around, and then we heard some fireworks. And she does pretty well for not liking it. Some dogs would be like oh, yeah. uh, unconsolable, you know, mm -hmm. trying to hide anywhere. It never bothered her at all when she was younger. And actually, this is better than I've seen her in the last couple of years. I actually give her Benadryl, which is sort of like a, almost like a tranquilizer yeah. effect. Didn't I was so impressed with her last year in the rain. Yeah. It was like soaking wet and she was just enjoying herself. She seemed very... Well, you know, retrievers are That's designed for going in the water to <laughs> get the dog so. yeah. Yeah. She enjoyed it, no yeah. doubt. She was in her element. <laughs> yeah. They have an inner coat yeah. and oil in their hair. Yeah. Mm. She'll go in the water when it's 20 she degrees loves it. out. She, she has. Loves it. Wow. Oh, wow. And slide around on the ice. Oh, when she was young, she would roll around on the ice. <laughs> and she has this funny thing she does, what I call rescuing rocks. She <laughs> picks up rocks out of the stream and brings them up. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> she pulls them with her paws, and yeah. then when he gets then, to a certain point, she, she sticks her nose with her in, mouth. Yeah. brings them yeah. out. <laughs> Gosh, I um, my my granddaughter fell into uh, a stream today. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, we got up in the morning. I was just like, anybody want to go for a walk? And nobody answered. So my wife and I went and walked around the back of uh, the Maryland Zoo at Druid Park. Yeah. That was our walk, and we were toward the end of the walk, and you know, then we heard, oh yeah, we're going to go to this place, and we did it down there, so we didn't go, but. Her, yeah, she fell. I mean, it, I've been there with her, and we and she loves to like you know climb over the rocks, and I'm usually right there with her. But apparently, she slipped or something and went like full into the water. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she got out of. It. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they Which took her home right away and yeah. in the bath and everything. Off, yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to be in that water also because it's uh, it's got uh, you know it's not uh, it's got uh, you know kind of sewage in it too. It's yeah. Not, yeah. So. yeah. Was she far from home or to get to? Um, let's see. No, I think they live about probably a five minute drive. Yeah, look, look at this. Yeah, oh. laying on the snow. <laughs> That's wow. ice on the edge of the stream. Yep. So I was very content. Anyone care for some more? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thanks. Thank you. Take, here, take that with you. I've no. Got, I got plenty more where that came from. All right. Thanks for bringing it. Thank you. You're welcome. What a gift. We could sort of like pack up the things a tiny bit before. Oh, that's right. It's going to be so fast. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We're going to read the press release. Yes, we are. here two years ago uh, we walked in so the president was uh, president Biden was here two we're years here. ago yep. in the AWACS report. and so when he's here they closed down this road that's behind us mm. yeah. Uh, yeah we didn't uh, we have to show everybody the city but anyway so they closed this and you can't get through and so um, I think it was New Year's Eve we went around the other road and came to the other side ooh, other side of the security checkpoint and walked up and yeah, yeah. and um, the Secret Service people, I don't think it was Secret Service over there, it was state police or something, it's a different police force for some reason, 
And they were, they thought we were needed to be afraid of the fox that was roaming the woods, and they kept warning us about the fox. Like, I don't think a fox is going to hurt us. Yes. Okay. Actually, my daughters said they have two baby foxes in their backyard. Oh, yeah, you said that. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. One time I was biking along the back side of the Hopkins campus to get home from night meeting and a fox ran across the road in front of me. Foxes are do fairly well in urban settings. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see, where's that press release? I think I stuck one in the envelope. Uh, I'm not sure if that's yours. It doesn't matter, they're the same. I think I stuck them very back. There it is. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, this is the press release that we sent out, um, and uh, the press coverage has been overwhelming, as you can see. We did that. We had yeah. here yeah. and CBS. They were all the cameras. They're yeah. gone now. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but uh, the reason to read this is it, it, it kind of lays out more why we're here. And uh, for those of you living in the area, um, uh, people from the Gulf, uh, helped by Fossil Free Media, uh, put up a billboard on one of the busy roads near uh, Joe Biden's uh, campaign headquarters. And um, the, the billboard is um, trying to remind Joe Biden that he needs to protect their coast as well as the work he did to protect this coast when he was still a senator. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sort of a twist on not in my backyard, uh, you know, not in my backyard, Joe Biden, you know, if it's not in your backyard, Joe Biden, why the fuck is it in our backyards? But anyway, um, for media release, December 30th, 2023. Uh, members of Occupy Biden returned to Biden home New Year's Eve. Um, and so the groups that... <laughs> The four of us work with um, Veterans for Peace, um, Third Act Virginia, Beyond Extreme Energy, and Fossil Free Media uh, helped us. Um, they're the ones that uh, put that billboard up, and this is their banner and their signs. And they are doing a lot of work to help the people in the Gulf. Um, so, uh, <coughs> Wilmington. Many groups from around the Mid-Atlantic rallied for a week in Wilmington two years ago to implore President Biden to declare a climate emergency and halt fossil fuel expansion. Many of us returned last New Year's Eve to sing the same message to our president. This year, the message is the same, but is also focused on LNG exports. While President Biden vacations in St. Croix this New, Year's, this New Year's to relax with family on the island's beautiful coast, we hope you will we hope he will be reminded of the vulnerable coastal communities bracing for intensifying storms, floods, and erosion across the Gulf Coast of the U.S. Just this year, Louisiana faced yet another devastating hurricane season, with some areas enduring catastrophic flooding multiple times in just six months. Entire tribal communities are racing to escape coastal erosion that could wipe their historic homelands off the map in just a decade's time. It's painful realizing that President Biden refuses to be the champion urgently needed by coastal residents across the Gulf Coast today. There, largely low-income communities of color, of color face routine flooding, aggressive coastal erosion, and extremely public health hazards as the oil and gas industry keeps scoring permits to expand along their rapidly diminishing wetlands. Yet even as South Louisiana residents continue picking up the pieces after repeated climate disasters, the Biden administration, listening Joe, the Biden administration stands ready to rubber stamp permits for up to 20 massive new liquefied natural gas LNG export terminal. And liquefied natural gas is just super chilled fracked methane. Um, that's what it is. And... Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's methane is 87 times more warming than CO2. It's something we don't need to be putting in our atmosphere right now. So this is very bad what 
President Biden is doing as far as the LNG build out. And sorry, I, 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 uh, I digress. I apologize. Um, uh, let's see. If fully built, this